Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers is Professor Camilo Sanifage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano. Good morning, Prof. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning, and thank you very much. All right. Well, I want to say um, congratulations to you because the Ramadan season is, or the holy month of Ramadan is almost over. And so the federal government has declared tomorrow and next tomorrow a public holiday. How do you feel? Yeah, yeah I feel very, I'm elated. Um, you know, it's a uh, pleasant time for us and it's a very joyful day. Mm -hmm. I'm in time. So thank you very much for you know the compliment and yes. uh wishing you all the best yes yes okay so let's get straight into the papers and um we're starting with the punch this morning now the punch leads with federal government plans three national id cards for 104 million nigerians well in june and the the riders on this one is nimc awaits presidential approval for may launch says procurement will be seamless Nigerians to get different e-cards for banking, social intervention, ECOWAS activities. So I'm sure many people's questions will be, um, why three? And do we have to register for this again? I mean, um, we remember how going to NIMC was a little bit tedious. In fact, there were mistakes. Some people haven't gotten their cards yet. And now we're seeing about three national ID cards coming for 104 million Nigerians. So what is what is this what's gonna happen? And this is just for June. We're in April. So in the next two months will they be able to execute this? Um what do you think about this? Even though they're saying it will be seamless, but do you believe that? No, I don't believe in that. Um given the Nigerian factor, uh it will take um, many years before they can be able to finish this. And uh, in the past place, this I think is unnecessary, is uncalled for. Uh, if you go to any country in the world, they just have one national ID, you know. Uh, we already have a name. Uh, there is a, also what is known as tax uh, something. Uh, it's, it's another system. Uh, there is BV, and now you are having three. It's a waste of resources, especially at this time that uh, we are in a very critical financial uh, uh, strength. So to now come up with uh, another thing, it is just going to, uh, you know, chop a lot of money and nothing will happen. After all, if it is a security issue, just tighten the uh, national identity uh, card, that's, that will be okay for everybody. But uh, here we are now, Beside uh, about uh, the two, three that we have, we are now uh, proposing to have another three things, uh, which is going to go a lot of money and which is not going to serve any benefit. And uh, above all, the deadline, they are not going to meet it. So I think it's a wasteful exercise. It's uncalled for uh, to say that we are going to have additional ID cards, I mean, national cards. Even if it is one, it is uh, unnecessary to place of having three at a time. Right. I mean, if we're going to be having three national cards, the one that we have, what is being done with the data? I know that for for you to you know have the national ID card, or rather for you to have your um, your passport, your international passport in Nigeria, if you want to renew it, you need to have linked it with your national ID card number, right? Even they came with BVN um, for your mobile phone, for you to be able to use your mobile phone, you need to link your national ID. So all of these things, I'm just wondering what they're even doing with the data, right? And then if we're looking at three national IDs, how are they going to be able to do it in less than three months? That's just what I'm wondering. And what is the, what is the essence of this? Is this what we're supposed to be talking about in Nigeria? We have a lot, um, a lot on our plates. You know, we have the security issues. We have the food crisis. We have the FX you know, issue as well. So is this supposed to be what we're, we're putting our monies into? Does, doesn't that seem like, you know, a misplaced priority in this case? 
Whether it is a misplaced uh, priority, you have forgotten we have a uh, tax identification mm -hmm. uh, also, this in which provide the same thing. So if you have one system, you can be able to have all the data that you need. Uh, rather than, you know, start thinking now, by the time you waste uh, resources on this, uh, it will not be uh, successful. It is not likely going to be successful, even if it is going to be, it's going to be a waste of money because the data that you want to collect is already in other system that you have. So all you need to do is perhaps to clean up the system that you have, the previous one that we have, and see where are the loopholes and try to plug in here and there. But to have this one, I think it's a misplacement of priority. It is a waste of resources, especially given the condition that we are in. The money that is going to be pumped into that, if it is put in other social sectors like education, like health, like food, I think it will affect Nigerians. Well, you have a country where uh, they are saying about 70% of the population are having multidimensional poverty. You don't address that. You now go to, uh, you know, a, a necessary thing like uh, ID card. And uh, even if you are going to do that, you say you are going to have three at a time. Now you add with what I've told you. So we are going to have uh, six or seven of uh, such numbers. Why, mm -hmm. why do we need it? We don't need uh, more than one. Okay, so I think it is a misplacement of priority, as you said it, and it is a waste of uh, national resources. Yeah, and it just seems like they're duplicating data. So why duplicate data if you already have it? Then just put them in the system that you know that is required to be, instead of just asking people to come out again um, and have to register. But um, we're going to move over to another story. Now, this one talks about the organized private sector, and it says OPS takes power tariff hikes to protest to Tinubu. So now, um, a few days ago, I think that was last week, Thursday, we saw in the papers where the um, tariff for Band A customers is being increased. So from 68 naira per kilowatt, it's going up to 225 naira per kilowatt. And now the organized private sector is, you know, protesting against it, against the tariff hike. And I mean, they're going to the president. What do you think about this? And the fact that, you know, we don't even have so much power. And then you're seeing a jump from 68 naira per kilowatt to 225. Isn't that too much? And do you think, you know, the protest that the organized private sector is having right now is quite, it's kind of justified? Yeah, it's justified, really. Um, the, the, the thing is here, I think here in the, in Kano and other places, 230 uh, naira uh, per unit uh, from 65. So I think um, this protest is justified because of the multiple effects that uh, this uh, raise of tariff is going to have. You know, industries, their major source of energy is electricity. Already gas is untouchable. Other sources are not available. And now raise it, what it means is that many industries are going to close shop and we are going to have uh, unemployment, additional, uh, I think it will compound that one. Now, even the little ones that will be able to stay afloat, what they are going to do is to raise up their uh, costs uh, so that at least um, they'll or recuperate what they spent uh, on, on, on it. So at the end of it, inflation will be very high. So the, our leaders don't seem to look at what will be the effect of any policy. You know, there is a uh, integration, backward integration between uh, electricity and other things. Okay, so by the time you, you now close your eyes and raise issues, just because I have told us to do, Remember, uh, not more than two months when IMF come out and said that there is need for Nigeria to, uh, you know, look at the tariff, electricity tariff, and uh, raise it. Yeah, it was in the papers, uh, you know. Uh, I think within a week, the minister come out and said they are going to do it. And now we are seeing them doing it. Now one begins to wonder, 
what government do we have? Is it Nigerian government for the people or is it an IMF government? Okay. Uh, is it a democratic government or is it a, 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 you know, a dictatorial government? Because Nigerians are crying. We are already crying about, uh, you know, harsh condition. And now you, are, you keep uh, mounting, uh, you know, uh, issues that compound the challenges. So I think by the time uh, they go, that is arising that they should protest to the president. And uh, if care is not, going, is, is not taken, I think this will now plunge the labor into it. And uh, perhaps uh, we don't want it. Uh, a, a situation where people will come out and protest. So by the time the people are pushed to the wall and they come out and take the laws into their hand or they take matters into their own hand, it will be too late for government. So it's rather time, it's better, it's a time now for the government to think that Nigerians are suffering and you shouldn't be just, uh, you know, taking all the palliatives, uh, all the directives given to us by IMF and uh, pushing Nigerians down and down. Already we are, Nigerians are crying about the harsh condition and now you have increased it and uh, at the end of it, leaders will come out and start talking of uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. But I think that is a dangerous thing uh, for our leaders to close their eyes. After all, we are a democratic government. We are supposed to be a government for Nigerians by Nigerians not a government by for the elite. Mm. Well, on The Guardian, it's also here, and it says electricity tariff hike, FCCPC, others pressure federal government to revert decision. So, well, you know, there's one thing they say in Nigeria, that when prices go up, they never really come down. So I wonder if the federal government is going to revert the decision back to 65 naira per kilowatt. But, well... There might be some good news here on the punch, and it says $2.3 billion Simon's Power Project Transformers substations arrive Nigeria. Do you think this would ensure that we have more power, so more power to distribute um, one, and then maybe the prices would come down just a little bit? Oh, you see, what, what will happen with all these things and the pressure, perhaps even if the government wants to respond, they may just maybe take uh, a little percentage of uh, that. But the issue of going back to 65, I don't think it is going to be a reality, mm -hmm. given the fact that our leaders are not sensitive to the yearnings and aspiration of the people. What they are going to do is just, uh, they will now come out as if it is a paper that they are doing to Nigerians and uh, perhaps uh, make it to like uh, 180, 190, or perhaps 200 and say, okay, we have done that. We have seen this uh, several times. And the arrival of uh, all these things, I don't see it is going to uh, do anything. Uh, you know, after all, what is the percent, what is the, uh, wattage that we are having in Nigeria. It is not uh, significant, okay? So we already have a very electric power supply, and uh, so the corruption around it will go, is going to uh, increase. Uh, the arrival of this and the new tariff, all we do is to uh, enrich very few people who will go home uh, smiling, and then further uh, push down Nigerians to poverty. Like what is happening now with the removal of subsidy? Okay, they see they have collected or they are collecting billions or trillions of Naira and Nigerians are suffering. Uh, like I said uh, the other time, uh, we, it's, it is time for our leaders to know that uh, government is, a, is not a business enterprise. The purpose of government is to improve the welfare of Nigeria, to protect their welfare, their, uh, you know, uh, lives and properties. You cannot be counting, uh, you know, that uh, you have saved this in by removing subsidy, you have saved X amount, while Nigerians are going down and down. So I think uh, it is high time for the government and for our leaders to come to their senses to know that uh, the government is for people. And that is the past thing uh, in our constitution, that it is the responsibility to, get, to protect the welfare and the security of Nigeria. By the time you impoverish them, 
you are destroying their welfare and their security. Mm. All right. So another story talks about a dollar video, and this one on the punch says release reports of Gandhi J's probe. Kanu tells EFCC, and then on the Guardian it says Yusuf knocks Gandhi J over criticism of administration. What do you think? I mean, you are in Kanu, so what, what do you think about this story and all that is happening in Kanu State? You see, all that is happening in Kano is that um, uh, it is unfortunate that our politics has been, you know, relegated into personality conflict. Mm. Uh, really, there, is, there, there are problems uh, with the previous uh, government. And, uh, you know, the issue of probe should have been done uh, in such a way that the purpose is, is not a sure, you know, accountability of our leaders. So, so we should have to, we have to draw a line between, you know, uh, 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 trying to have uh, a kind of accountability and the victimization. So I think uh, what we are having, what we are seeing now is a continuation of the long-term rivalry uh, between uh, the two camps, and uh, we are not likely to see the end of it. After all, uh, I'm not saying the, the, the government should not be probe. No, it should be probe, uh, you know, for the purpose of accountability. But when you now take it uh, to which hunting or something, that is where you are now uh, crossing the line. So let's uh, EFCC come out with uh, the report, and then the appropriate uh, uh, action should be taken. After all, this is the purpose. You know, one of the problems with our system is that this issue of immunity of our leaders, uh, you know, is taken to be a license by our politicians. So they do whatever they do, they will be reckless in their government and, uh, you know, uh, because they have immunity. So, But where we have such things that you can now make people accountable uh, at the end of it, I think this is a process of making the uh, system better. But to me, I think the process we have to now draw a line between sanitizing the system and victimizing uh, our fellow politicians, because by the time you do that, it is going to be a cycle. Uh, tomorrow, after this government, another person will come and will probe and so on so and so forth. But to me, I want uh, uh, accountability. I will, people will want accountability, and uh, that is what we are calling for. But like I said, let's draw a line between accountability and victimization. I think accountability is a no-brainer, especially if, uh, if you, you know, assume public office. You should be ready to be accountable. You should be ready to be transparent because that's the only way um, the constituents can trust you. So it's a no-brainer. Um, and like you've said, do not victimize these people, but they should, you know, give accountability so that no one is just probing into them and going into their private lives and, you know, just making a mess of the whole situation. So if you're accountable, that way, you know, you're doing what is right and everyone can see it, you know. Um, okay, so still staying on political matters, there is one here that talks about Peter Obi and the Labour Party. Now, this says, I'm focused on fixing Nigeria's problems, not Labour Party's internal crisis, says Obi. Now, I'm sure that you know there's been a little ruckus with the Labour Party and the NLC. And um, in fact, their headquarters was, sh was you know, closed at some point. And there's just been a lot, right, with um, the, the, the leader of the, of the Labour Party. And some people have come out to say, oh, why is Peter Obi not saying anything? Anything. Is he in support? Is he against? Well, he has made a statement now that says, I'm focused on fixing Nigeria's problems, not Labour Party's internal crisis. So what do you think about this? What do you think about this statement from him? You see, uh, one thing is uh, we have to draw a line between the candidate and the a party. Mm. Of course, um, the, the entrance of uh, Peter Obi into Labour Party is what uh, ginger the party and make what is what makes it to have such impact that uh, it has. But to me, I think um, one thing is that if care is not uh, taken, uh, a, by 2027, 
Labour Party will not be as relevant as it is uh, going to be, as it was in uh, uh, the previous election. The fact is this. One, uh, in Nigeria, our politicians are such that um, uh, they are always in government. So many of the big shots in Labour Party uh, will now go into uh, the ruling party. So that one will create it. Secondly, the ruling party and the ruling elite will do everything to cripple uh, any uh, credible opposition. Look at, uh, for example, uh, PDP when it was in power. Uh, it said for 16 years, and it was powerful. But uh, since it lost uh, power, PDP is just struggling to manage to uh, survive internal crisis here and there. That is what is going to happen. And uh, Peter would be given what he did in uh, the election, telling you, come 2027, even if it's relevant, uh, the elites will be will do all they will to, to cripple him, to make sure that uh, he just, even if he will get a ticket, he will not be uh, as strong as uh, he has. Look at the example of uh, Atiku Abubakar. How many times did Atiku Abubakar uh, contest and he lost? Uh, the people who are the power behind will make sure that he's not going to make it. But to me, I think, um, and like uh, uh, all other things, uh, uh, the Labour Party, uh, PDP, and all political parties, what they need to do is to put their house in order. Mm -hmm. uh, not to be thinking of uh, winning election, it is too early now. Put their house together and if possible, let's have two or three major political parties that will now contest and, you know, uh, among themselves, I give Nigerians options. But uh, the way we are having it, I am afraid that uh, if, not, if care is not taken, that at the end of it, it will be the same history like what happens to other uh, major parties in Nigeria. Mm. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think three, maybe three is too small, five political parties, instead of having so many and, you know, we're hearing different stories from them. And one thing that you said is separating the candidate and the party, which is so apt. I think it's important that, you know, we do that and not try to suck the candidate in into, you know, whatever rockers is happening in whatever political party it might be. OK, so still staying on The Guardian, let's talk about... Um, this 500 billion naira recapitalization for the banks and so that's the major headline on the guardian it says road to 500 billion naira recapitalization bank owners lobby seek adjustment in share capital composition what do you think about this i mean as of today it stands at 25 billion it was about two billion in 2005, and then there was a recapitalization to 25 billion. But from 25 billion, we're seeing it go up to 500 billion, which is a lot, right? And so the headline here says bank owners lobby and seek adjustment in share capital composition. So I know a lot of them would want to, you know, have mergers and acquisition, um, especially when it comes to raising the funds because 500 billion is quite you know a huge chunk of money but what do you think about this recapitalization and the figure going from 25 billion to 500 billion you see we, we one major problem with us in nigeria is that we don't learn from history you know when it was by uh, two uh, it was read to 25 what happened to the industry Many, many banks collapse, uh, you know, and uh, there are acquisition here and there, merger and so on. And we know the one problem around that merger and acquisition, uh, the uh, problem surrounding that kind of things, uh, which has not been too far for us to forget. Now, by the time you are raising it from uh, 25 to 500, I think it's too much. It is a, a necessary that you have to raise it. Uh, we are going to see so many things. Corruption will be, uh, you know, very high in the industry. And then 
Uh, people don't know it. Uh, the poor man, the common man is going to be affected with that. Because by the time the by owners of the bank try, they, they, they couldn't get they, they are going to pass it on to the person, they, they, I mean to the uh, uh, ordinary people. And this is what we are seeing. That is why in Nigeria today, we are one of the most taxed people in terms of banking. Uh, anything that you do, there will be taxi account maintenance, there will be this things, and we are happy. So at the end of it, they are going to pass it on to the uh, people. So I think uh, these are some of the things that our leaders, especially uh, uh, the, uh, the ones in the, in the banking, the banking sector, they should look at. Whatever policy you are going to have, uh, you have to look at what will be the consequence of, uh, you know, in public policy, you call it a rational process. You look at the consequence of your policy and then uh, what are the, the effects, and then you do not take them off. And you keep on thinking. You are comparing yourself with others and say hey, that's a... Uh, uh, you know, that uh, other countries in other clans, they have it. You don't compare yourself with this. Look at your own environment. Look at the resources. Look at the effect of the policy before you close eyes and say, we are going to do that. Uh, if care is not taken, if it goes through, maybe in the next few years, somebody will come and start talking of either 100 billion, uh, uh, 1 trillion or whatever. So that... Uh, it is uh, something that is sensitive uh, to Nigeria. So I, I think uh, we should allow it. After all, small, small banks are the engine of growth in in, in uh, They have the cottage banks and other things. These are the ones that promote grassroots uh, development. No, not that huge banks that we are talking about. that you know they're just trying to ensure that only the big players are in the industry so if you're a smaller bank and you cannot afford that then it's best for you to um, merge with you know a bigger bank it's okay for a bigger bank to acquire you and that's where mergers and acquisition come in so only the big players are supposed to be in the industry and that way they can provide better services um, to the people don't you think but anyways, we're we're a little bit out of time, so I'm just going to take this other story that on the business NG talks about the Naira stability will attract more manufacturers to Nigeria, and then 45% um, of bank CEOs now women, which is which is great. I mean, women are taking a seat at the table. But before we leave, I want to take this one on Nature News, and it says we hear lots. CCECC -E as Tinubu sets to flag off Abuja light rail. What do you think about this? Um, so I know one thing we've really spoken about is the fact that we need better infrastructure in Nigeria. And Tinubu is um, about to set off or flag off the Abuja light rail. So what do you think about this project? As we wrap up. No, it's, it's, it's a good thing. You see, the uh, railway is the engine of growth in many countries in, in developed countries in developing countries what they have is that they have a, a good rail system uh, after all the huge huge that they take and the passenger the distance so i think it's a, it's a good thing but uh, the, the only thing is that nigeria is not they goes along our leaders should try to see that this thing you concentrate on uh, major other areas to wallow, which is what you have written there, and there uh, also. I think it is a good thing. We have to start with something. This should not be just in the uh, cut. So you allow the country to wallow. Mm. is an engine this is a, a welcome idea all right okay thank you so much um we want to say thank you for coming 
and sharing your valuable contributions. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. All right. That's where we wrap it up on this segment. We'll be speaking with Professor Camilo Sanifage. He was from the Department of Political Science by Yero University, Kanu. And we've just been reviewing the papers, taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be well, looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us.